no, that is all wrong. All of these things are so nuanced and you just, you can't be mad at either one of them. She's stepped a little bit outside of just being a doctor. I'm definitely more of a sharer. <laughs> she was a child. She was a teenager in college. Man, that is so beautiful. That's an excellent way to describe consent. I love that. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jess the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're gonna to be jumping in to another episode of Grey's Anatomy. This is a highly requested episode, so let's jump right in. Hi, what can I do for you? I'm Dr. Krev, Josephine, Joe. I was born at Emerson Hospital. And soon after, I was left at a fire station on 47th Street. I think that you're the person who left me. I think you're my mother. Well, hey, uh, I'm thinking about Cal's Burgers tonight. Celebrate your last day of sabbatical. Can't have a thing tonight. With who? With Kelly. There's a Kelly? Define thing. We're just talking is all. Since a direction, can't find my way to the ER. It's one floor down, and then if... You know, why don't I take you? I feel so stupid. I was putting away dishes and just smacked myself in the face with the cabin. Such an idiot. That is some intuition right there. When someone tells us what happened, but it really doesn't exactly match up with what the injuries look like. We start to think deeper about what really happened. Look, I don't know what you're after, but you can't be here. I'm not after anything, I just wanna talk. You cannot be here. One conversation, and you will never hear from me again. I'm sorry, you knocked on my door. You have a house, a really beautiful house. Thank you. And kids and a husband and a dog and crown frickin' moldings. I wanted you to have a better life. You know, I, I, I appreciate a girl with fire in her belly. I didn't have a better life. I wasn't better off. I lived in foster homes so bad, it was better to live in my car. And when a man finally told me that he loved me, I believed him. Even when he beat the crap out of me so bad, I couldn't see. Just tell me who my father is and I will try and find him. You can't. He's dead. Jeez, lady. You don't want to, I don't know, soften it a little? Please sit down. You abandoning me wasn't enough. You just have to spread the pain around a little bit. Sit down. It's my father that you're talking about. No, it's not. He I'm hurt me. I'm so sorry that your childhood sweetheart didn't pan out. So he sorry. He hurt me. Please sit down. Okay. There are so many layers here. Clearly, they seem to be alluding to the fact that he may have SA'd her, and that was how she got pregnant with Joe, and subsequently all of the trauma that comes with that. While Joe is a person that grew up in such a horrible situation, this woman, who is her birth mother, also dealt with so much trauma. All of these things are so nuanced, and you just, you can't be mad at either one of them. They're both coping in the only way that they know how and can think of. When I was a freshman in undergrad, he chased after me for weeks for a date until finally I said yes. I said, I said yes to that date. I said yes to going to Brayden's Point to watch the sunset. And then he started kissing me and touching me. And I said no. And I continued to say no. And I fought him. I fought as hard as I could, but he would not take no for an answer. So, nine months later, I had a baby. I had you, and then five days later, I didn't. This is such a nuanced situation. I can't imagine what Joe's feeling, finding out that her father did those horrible things. Was her mother the only person he did this to? It's just, there are so many thoughts that race through everyone's head in a situation like this. Is there someone that we can call? My husband's in Portland on a business trip. I don't wanna bother him. It's okay. I called her here to help. Hi. Hi. 
Why do I need another doctor? Can't I just keep you two? All right, I'm still just a little pressure. Here we go. Good job. All right, Abby, you do have a tear in your diaphragm, and it's caused your abdominal organs to move up into your chest. So what's going on is she has what's called a diaphragmatic hernia. When the organs that are supposed to be in the abdomen move up into the chest, they move the lungs over and make it harder for her to breathe, obviously cause a ton of pain. She is definitely gonna need surgery to repair this. The other thing is she mentioned that her husband is on a business trip in Portland. I'm wondering if it was her husband that did this or if it was someone that broke into her home. She's clearly struggling with being around men. So it seems like it was a male that did this. First and foremost, she's gonna need some surgical attention with this diaphragmatic hernia, and then she's gonna need definitely a lot of psychological attention once the acute injuries are managed. You're gonna need a surgery. All right, whatever you need to do so I can go home. All right, both gonna OR, but do not let the nurses or anyone else do an antibiotic prep. So we're not operating on her? Abby's wounds are consistent with someone who's been sexually assaulted, and if that's true, when the nurses prep her with an antibiotic solution, evidence will be erased. So we wait. We wait and give Abby the chance to talk without taking more of the agency that she's already lost. Go book the OR and come straight back. So Teddy has very intuitively also understood that this patient has suffered some SA. Can we ask you how you got hurt? Doesn't matter. One of you, say whatever the hell it is you're trying so hard not to say. Abby. I'm worried your husband hurt you and from the marks on your legs, possibly sexually assaulted. Dr. Karev, hallway, now. Jack would never. He's never raised his voice. He's calm. And someone else. Abby, if we take you to the OR, we have to make you sterile. So everything that happened to you, all the evidence, it all goes away. You can still report it. So Joe is coming at this from definitely a place of knowing what has happened. She's stepped a little bit outside of just being a doctor. Teddy is definitely handling it more like a doctor professional would. Joe is still professional, but she's put a little bit more emotion into it. And it seems like this patient is responding a little bit to that, which may be a good thing. It's hard to know though how a patient will respond in a situation like that when she's being very directly asked about an extremely traumatizing situation. We all know if I do that kid, it ends up in the back of some police station, ignored for years, while I sit there wondering when the bomb will go off, waiting to see if a jury of my peers will believe a woman who wore a skirt a few inches too short who had a few cocktails too many at a bar last night after having a fight about laundry with her husband. Socially, I understand what she's saying and she has a point. Coming forward with a lot of these things is becoming much less stigmatized, but unfortunately, there is still some stigma surrounding this. And especially in the person that's coming to report it, they're scared, they're traumatized, and they already inherently feel like they're going to be stigmatized about this situation. She's terrified, understandably so. And she is thinking back and thinking about all of the things she may have done wrong to make this happen. And at the end, of the day this was not her fault she did not consent to what happened to her but she's terrified of the repercussions my ex-husband he hurt me not in the way that you were hurt but he hit me he hurt me for years and i was so so terrified and so convinced that no one would believe me and i was so so alone i never had the chance or the choice to hold him responsible i can't imagine how you are feeling right but one day, you might feel differently. You might want justice, and I want you to have everything you need to do that. When you're a doctor, there's this line of how much do you share of your personal story? I'm definitely more of a sharer. <laughs> And I think a lot of people are able to connect better and trust more and share their story when they know that the person that they're talking to really is human. 
and really has struggles and really understands what they're going through, not on a medicalized level, not on a healthcare level, but on a personal level, it's easier to connect and you feel safer talking about these things. And as a physician, I try and offer that to my patients as much as I can. And then on the other side, as a patient, talking to another physician when I'm going as a patient, it feels really good to be able to connect on a personal level because it feels safer to share your story, whatever that may be. And when you feel that safety, that is when you can get the best possible care. And my husband, he can never know. He won't have to. Do it. Just do the damn care. Are you ready? You have to say it. It's the law. You say yes, we go to the next step. You say no at any time, we stop. There's actually a specific person that is designated to do this exam. They're trained to do it. For the sake of the show, I think they're having Teddy do it because it just flows a little bit better and this patient already trusts Teddy. But in reality, it is a different person, a sane nurse that does this exam and is trained to do specifically this exam in a non-threatening way that makes the patient feel safe. It wasn't until years after it happened. After I happened. After the rape happened. After I was raped. I eventually found my way to therapy and I did all the work. I actually had to work through calling it rape to begin with. But someone, somewhere along the way, a man most likely, decided they wanted to qualify this word rape, you know, date rape, uh, acquaintance rape. It's not as real unless it happens to a woman who's running through the park at night or or walking down a dark alley I somehow because I knew him what he took from me didn't matter but it did matter the conversation surrounding SA rape is extremely nuanced she's right those qualifications that used to be more of a thing of date rape oh it's someone you know and it doesn't count unless you were attacked in the middle of the night no that is all wrong. It comes down to consent. A yes is a yes and a no is a no. And even if you said yes to going on a date, even if you said yes to getting in the car, if you said no to the sexual encounter, it is a no and it is a sexual assault. At the same time here, now Joe is processing this and she's still angry because although her birth mother went through all this trauma, Joe has still had her own fair share of trauma through her life. And she blames her mom, even though the situation is just so nuanced. I was petrified every single moment of my pregnancy. But you know, movies and books and, and, and magazines, they just kept talking about this love that you feel the minute your baby is born, how instantaneous it is and how um, your heart just cracks wide open. And I gave the hospital a fake name. I left with you. I just wanted to be alone with you and I just wanted it to be the two of us. And and I wanted to stare at you and hold you till that love came. But it never did. No, it did. It did. Everything they said was absolutely right. My heart cracked wide open. It was never just us. No matter how hard I tried, no matter what I did. I was just a reminder of him. I resented you so much for it. What I'm gathering from this mom is that she was so resentful about how her baby came to be that she may have even been afraid that she was gonna hurt her in some way or subconsciously do something wrong to this child. And so I think that is why she thought that Joe might have a better life without her. It sounds like she just didn't trust herself, which is a terrifying thought to have when you're holding a newborn innocent little baby. I did the best I could. The best you could would have been to find an adoption agency and make sure I had a home and someone to love me, not toss me away like garbage. It is so easy to look at me now and think of all the ways that I could have been kinder, better, or smarter. And I just want to interject before she even goes on. She was a child. She was a teenager in college. She wasn't even done developing cognitively, emotionally. Fault and blame are such a hard thing to place in this situation. I was seven weeks pregnant when my ex-husband cracked my ribs and threw me across the living room floor. He didn't know that I was pregnant. And I decided in that moment that he could never know. I knew that if I tried to leave, he would kill me. 
And I also knew that I couldn't raise a kid in that fear and in that danger. You had an abortion. I've never told anyone that. I don't know why. I'm not ashamed of it. I, I did what I had to do. Two people that have dealt with extremely traumatizing situations in two different ways. No one can say which way was the better way. Tuck says they're talking. Yes. What is that, talking? I think they're dating. Mm. But we're going to have to sit his butt down and teach him about respect, empathy, consent. Condoms. Oh, dear Lord, I have to talk to my son about condoms. 100%. Or... I could sit down with Tuck. I absolutely love the other side of this conversation, talking to men, talking to young boys about consent, about respect. The other thing to mention here is that it goes both ways. A woman can sexually assault a man and consent and respect, it comes from the female side too. So this conversation needs to happen with kids regardless of their sex, their gender. Abby, it's time. We have to go up now. No, I'm not, I'm not ready. I can't leave you in this room. Are you ready? Standing on the platform Watching you go Yes. What you did today with Abby, that was not protocol. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. I'm saying it should be. Man, that is so beautiful. Obviously, this is a TV show, right? It's a little bit more dramatized, but what it boils down to is women empowering other women and broadening that to people empowering other people and helping other people heal and cope with extremely traumatic situations. This is just beautiful. Any game we watch on TV, right? They, they run, toss, wrestle, chase, until someone gets hurt or until someone calls time out then the game stops no matter how much fun they're having everything stops that's consent i thought we were just having burgers yeah well i thought talking was just talking but you and i both know that's not the same thing anymore so that's an excellent way to describe consent. I love that. And it works both ways. If either person in the relationship, whoever stops having fun, you just stop. Both of you stop. That's it. This is beautiful. I love it. Too often, trauma gets dismissed as just in our head. But the pain is real. We feel it in our muscles, our cells, our hearts, our heads. Stop and while there's no magic fix, no pill to make it disappear, we can ask for help. And we can tell our truth whenever we're ready. I won't let you down, my friend. Wow, that was an excellent episode. Thank you to whoever recommended that. So many great things to talk about. Consent, trauma, all the things. I love that a lot of these really popular shows are able to give these really important and really heavy topics a platform, a place to start the conversation and learn more so that everyone is more aware, so that the stigma is broken down. It's amazing. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm Jess the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one.